I'll talk about the Bayern Munich game, which the man of the match performance, I would say, and it was great that Paisley had put you on because they didn't know how to deal with you. Yeah. And that was him as being a master tactician. They didn't know how to deal with you, and you put in a tremendous performance, that dribble in your own half. Yeah. That penalty, that should have been a penalty. How would that should have been a penalty? Yeah. Your second touch, that should have been a penalty. That was a yeah. stonewall penalty. Yeah, well, again, the Germans were, were meticulous um, with their approaching. As the, as the, the saying goes again, they, they knew everybody in our squad and had a dossier on everybody in our squad, apart from possibly the likes of me and, and, and Gushi. Yeah. And yeah. I think what Bob did on that night is she threw a spanner in the work by, by putting me on. And, he obviously must have thought again that I was good enough yeah. um, to be replacing Kenny Dalglish in, in such a such a big game for the club. And uh, I got a lot of applause that night, um, and I, I think that there was as as a, as a team. And this club was always always based on on what's done by the team, and it's that we were brilliant as a team. Um, Colin Irwin, Sammy, Lee, uh, Richard Money had all come through the reserves and. And we're playing in that game last night, and I thought that we, we defended them. As the game we won, we more confident. We, we, we always knew that we were going to score. Yeah. Um, as you alluded to before, we should have had a, a penalty in, in the in the first half, and again maybe again if we'd been given that, we may have lost the game. So with hindsight, and hindsight a big thing, it's it, it turned out the right way for us anyway. Um, who's the greatest player you've played with? Yeah, he was superb. Superb player. Um, when you when people talk about world class players, and I, I will look back on on my lifetime and think, well, I've had the opportunity to to play with, with one of the one of the greatest. And the the success that he helped bring to the club as as a player and as as a manager. And again, you know yourselves with being Liverpool fans of how well he's revered to her by 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 the cop and the people in the stadium. Um, on match days and he's, he's, he's loved it and, and like this so. Absolutely. Now with the Asian cop, how would can you tell me the first time your your first interaction with an Asian Liverpool fan? Yeah. Do you remember that interaction? Do you remember when that um, yeah well I've got again I've got a lot of a lot of my friends um, come from, from all over again from all over the, the world as well as all over this country. And, um, I know through myself and, and John Barnes we, we've always been asked this question over over the years um, of diversity within football and although we've got such a, a big Asian population within the UK, how nobody really from the Asian community has broke into or made a major impact within side, um, professional football and um, I think in years gone by through the, the culture of Asian families is that maybe that the, the, the fathers and the parents haven't encouraged the boys to be going down the line of professional football and have always wanted them to go down the, the route of a more academic um, career which was going to be sustainable over the year right. but with football being such a, mm. a, a, a short career but also again it's, um, it's, it's a really hard profession to break into but on top of that, there's, there was always the stereotypes surrounding Asian players of why, um, again, they, they won't be, they can't play in the winter and right, they're right, not right. strong enough and not da, 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 da. and those stereotypes for me are, are wrong. Again, I've I, I watch Asian football and again I grew up with with Asian football players who again within the community again and then you look at them and you think well, technically. There's, they're as good, if not better, than than the white counterparts within within the football um, leagues that they're playing in. But there's always this stigmatism and empathy about Asian players, and I, I think to be fair that it's wrong. And what we have set out to do now is is to, to set up an organisation that's going to encourage the links between um, Asian football and professional football, because I have been to a lot of um, events. Uh, Asian tournaments and you have young people, I mean what about us, what about us, why can't we, why can't we yeah. and I've even gone to events where we've encouraged scouts from local football clubs to to attend and I think football is like is is like um, is like trends and I think that once the, the first Asian player gets into 
the Premier League and becomes a star, then everybody it's like a breath of fresh air. So yeah. We can relax now again. <laughs> no, they're not all, they're not as what, what we thought, and here we go. But is the Premier League ready for that now? Do you feel? Is. Yeah, like again, the Premier League is a multinational game, and you get um, players from third world countries, like again, like Africa, uh, South America, and from from the business point of view. And I remember um, I played that I played that Blackburn for five years, and I sat down with, with the chairman one day, and I said to him again, if you had an Asian player in here, you would actually double the gates on on, on match days from a business point of view that would make sense to a club like Blackburn mm. and and they didn't understand it just didn't understand it and again maybe some clubs again didn't want Asian supporters in, in the right because again there are other issues that come with that and they don't, they don't want to be dealing with it or be seen to be dealing with it mm. but from a from a, a financial or a business point of view um, you, you walk around this ground on match days and you hear the different languages and the different cultures that come to, to support the club and you see from, as a brand how big we are, then you can understand the importance of, 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 of welcoming all kinds and you see a lot of clubs now who are going into Korea and, and Japan and China and bringing players here. Um, some of them again are good players, some of them are maybe average players but it's the market revenue from those countries which which promote them here. Yeah, because Damien Kamali actually recently said that they he wants to find the next Asian star yeah. and bring them to Liverpool. Yeah. And yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And hopefully we can find someone close to home too, because we've got a lot of talent here. Yeah. And yeah. you know the yeah. the well, as you were saying before, the those stereotypes, you know, what the parents used to think. Um, that's slowly changing now. Well you've got third and fourth generation uh, young men now who have been born and brought up here where our parents came over and came from a, from a, a different culture and they, they, most of their emphasis would have been on wealth, on education yeah. for us but now again with, with, with um, as I say, third and fourth generation young men who are going through the school and the education system and playing football on a, on a, a regular basis now want that opportunity to be able to, to play on stages like this. Yeah, absolutely. So what's next for you? What, what, what are you working on right now? Um, obviously, again, I'm, I'm working on, on setting up a, an Asian academy. Um, we've got a, a competition that's going to start um, next May, which is going to be called the Asian Kings, which is going to be an invite to Asian football teams to join in a a competition we're hoping to attract about 60 teams but on the back of that we're going to set up um, an academy and if there's any players that come through the, the Asian Kings football tournament that we can maybe develop and introduce into again institutions like this it's only going to be better for, for us as a, as a football club as, as LFC and also again for Asian football. Um, I also work in schools and in prisons. I coach social inclusion, working with um, with young people in primarily to keep them or to encourage them to to come to school and to get an education rather than them be out of school and on the streets and, and selling and banging and, and going on with all the the, the negative um, the negative opportunities that are presented to them on the streets.